Hey everybody, this is Maxine Taylor with your September 2020 Astrological Overview. And um, there's not a great deal going on this month because um, number one, we are all, at least in the United States, just preparing for the end of the year, November 3rd. And so you don't have to worry about Mercury being retrograde right now or Venus retrograde. However, the one thing that is going on is that Mars, the planet of action and energy, uh, wherever it is in your chart, is what you throw yourself into. Um, it's what comes first to you. It's what you fight with and and or fight for so when i said there wasn't a whole lot going on i kind of understated myself because when mars goes retrograde which it will officially on september 10th now we've been in the shadow of the retrograde mars and let me tell you what happens when mars goes retrograde so you can see, look and see what has been going on in your own life Mars is the action that keeps the world moving forward. When it goes retrograde, it flatlines. Nothing happens. It's not like a Mercury retrograde where everything is confused. It just indicates nothing's happening. So if you have noticed in your career, in your life, with your home, with your kids, that things just are, you're not making traction. You are probably feeling the shadow of the retrograde Mars. Now, officially, Mars is going to go retrograde on September 10th. And thing is, it's going to stay retrograde till November 14th. You will know, you will feel it. You will, those of you, I say you, those of you who are empathic, you're already feeling it. If you're intuitive on top of that, uh, and, and always getting downloads, and always getting uh, messages, you're feeling it. The rest of the world may or may not be feeling it, and they will notice that things are just not moving forward. It's like the world is on pause when Mars goes retrograde. And some of you are saying, well, that's how it's felt for a while now, the hurry up and wait. Um, it will be quite retrograde on the 10th of September until November 14th. Then it will be in the shadow of the retrograde until the first week in January. 2021. So that's a long time. However, when we're in the shadow of the retrograde, uh, it feels like the planet is retrograde, but it's not. It's just the remnant of the retrograde. I hope that's making sense to you. So that's what we've got going. Uh, and the reason it, it seems to me like there's not a whole lot going on because back in June and July, we had Mercury and Venus both retrograde, doing a retrograde tag team with us on top of three eclipses. That was crazy town, really. And so not to have an eclipse going on, although we are feeling the summer eclipses. Uh, remember, they're strongest three to four months after they occur but not to be having an active eclipse right now and um, not to have anything retrograde officially right now kind of gives you breathing room. And I think maybe that's what some of uh, us have been feeling is hmm, breathing room. Okay. Now, uh, my virtual full moon ceremony, which of course is free of charge. Uh, the full moon 
is on September 2nd, depending on where you live. Uh, it's, it's between the first and the second. Um, and it could be, if you're halfway around the world, between the second and the third. I, 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 I haven't looked. But whenever anything is right around midnight or one o'clock in the morning, it, it gets a little weird. So uh, the full moon is uh, at 1.22 a.m. if you're Eastern Daylight Time. If you're Central, it's 12.22. Mountain, 11.22 the day before. See what I'm saying? So if you're in Australia or China, you can have to figure it out yourself is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh gosh. So we have the full moon and I'm going to grab my glasses so I can get this accurate. Oh, that is much better. The full moon um, on the second Eastern time is in 10 Pisces, 12, 10 degrees, 12 minutes of Pisces. Find that in your birth chart because on the full moon, that's when things come to a head. They go pop. And what, whatever house that falls in, that is the area of life where things will come to a head. This can be a wonderful um, full moon for you. Uh, if you've been waiting, if, you, if you've been waiting for a situation to resolve itself, even though, as I mentioned earlier, Mars is in the shadow of the retrograde, um, this is when it should happen, which is terrific. I love full moons. Then, the moon starts waning, and two weeks later, we have a new moon. Just about two days before the new moon, we're in the dark of the moon, which means when you look at the sky, you can't see the moon. Therefore, the dark of the moon. Um, this is a time when energy is more introspective. Uh, you're not going to throw a party on the dark of the moon. Uh, people are going to be tired. You would not plan a major event uh, because it takes more energy to move on the dark of the moon. However, on the new moon, uh, which is the 17th, which, and the new moon is in 25 Virgo, find that in your chart. Um, it's 7 a.m. Eastern daylight time. So convert that to your time zone. This is when the energy starts growing. Yay. And after the dark of the moon, if you're one of those people who's a go-getter, you'll be real happy because that's when things start moving. So find 25 of Virgo in your birth chart because that is where the energy starts moving forward. Don't you love it? All right. So let me tell you where the planets are this month so you can track them. Virgo, as you know, until the 22nd, the sun is in your sign and it's your time, it's your turn to shine. Then on the 22nd, the sun moves into Libra and all of you lovely Librans will be celebrating your birthdays um, for the next 28 days, 28 to 30 days. And so um, we start off with the sun in Virgo. Details, details, detail, details. Cross those T's, dot those I's. Then on the 22nd, it, the sun moves into, I say the right thing at the right time to the right person, Libra. Things are sweeter, more charming, uh, more politically correct. Um, there's some people I'm thinking of who I know are never politically correct, but Libra, you can be incredibly politically correct um, and very complimentary. And Libra is a sign of partnership. And Libra likes to make 
balance and harmony. It doesn't want to walk into balance and harmony. It wants to be the intermediary who creates or that creates balance and harmony. So that's the sun. Now Venus, the planet of love and money. Let's not forget that. Venus is the lesser benefic. It starts off in cancer. And so uh, this has been a time of loving your home, uh, nurturing your family, uh, being very sensitive to other people's feelings because yours are so sensitive at, at that point. Whenever um, a planet is in Cancer, we tend to be a little more sensitive. And if you have Cancerian planets in your chart, you know what I mean, because at that point you're even more sensitive. Well, on the sixth, Venus moves into great, grand, glorious Leo. And then Venus functions in a much more dramatic way. Uh, Leo likes fun. And so when Venus was in Cancer, we're talking home and family and emotional security. On the 6th, it's going to move into Leo and you're going to say, hey, I'm ready to party. And some of you have already started. Well, you're going to keep on keeping on. I love that. Because Venus is what you love. Now, Mercury, our conscious mind, what we think about and talk about. All right, it has been in Virgo, which it rules. Virgo is a very analytical sign. It's black or white with a Virgo. Virgo deals with details. And Virgo tries very hard to be perfect, which drives them crazy. Virgo, you drive yourself crazy if you're less than perfect. And so does your opposite sign, Pisces, because opposite signs are alike. Um, so Mercury is in its own sign, Virgo, until the fifth. Then, like the sun, it, uh, well, actually, it leads the way into Libra. And we're talking about getting together. We're talking about partnership. Um, we're seeing both sides of every picture. That can be confusing but it's very pleasant. And finally, just in the last few days of the month, let me see if I have a date on that. Yes, on the 27th, Mercury moves into the psychic detective of the Zodiac, Scorpio. Scorpio, the most powerful sign in the entire Zodiac. It's all or nothing with Scorpio. And this is a time when secrets can surface all over the place. Remember, this affects everybody. This is the whole wide world. So this is a terrific time to become the psychic detective and look at what is really going on undercover. And then, of course, I mentioned Mars. And... Just notice how you feel when it's retrograde, which it will be on the 10th officially. So I think I've covered everything. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention to you. Many people are going through a very confused time now. They, I tease and say, they don't know what they want to be when they grow up. And I'm kind of facetious because I'm talking about people in their 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, if I have not helped you discover your life's mission, you might find this a really good time for that. Um, it's on my website, maxinetaylor.com, under the Spiritual Coaching tab. Check it out. If it feels right, just contact me. It's, it's done face-to-face -face online, so you actually get time online with me. So I think that's it. I'm glad we have no retrogrades from Mercury and Venus right now. Give thanks. 
and join me next month because as we get closer to November, things are going to get a little more uh, tense, a little more uh, exciting um, until whenever we have the election, they come to a head. And this election, of course, affects not just those of us who live in the United States, but everybody. Uh, we are one. We are family. So to all of you, my family friends who I have yet to meet, till next month, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours.